After the initial victory and nervous attention that marked the first few days of the counteroffensive, the Ukrainian advance, especially on the southern front, slowed to a near standstill. Here, to Ukrainian and Western officials who came clean about the slower-moving reaction than expected, and to observers around the world, hope collided with serious reality as the scale and difficulty of the task became clear. Predictably, the main obstacle to rapid armored advance was first and foremost the vast and dense minefields placed by the Russians in front of their main defenses along the southern front. To make headway, the Ukrainians used a combination of mine-clearing line fillers and breakthrough vehicles, although both were in short supply and were often easy targets for Russian artillery and anti-tank fire. Today, about 50 clashes took place in five directions on the Ukrainian front. In the Bakhmut direction, the Ukrainian army nevertheless took the initiative despite the strong resistance of the enemy. The spokesman for Armed Forces Group East stressed that the gunners of the Ukrainian troops, with the high quality performance of tasks, overshadowed the quantitative superiority of the enemy's artillery weapons. On Monday, the Defense Forces reported that 67 attackers were killed and 118 wounded in the Bakhmut direction. Ukraine's 32nd Mechanized Brigade shared footage showing troops destroying advancing Russian tanks with artillery. In the video, a Ukrainian reconnaissance crew can be seen finding three Russian tanks operating in the Bakhmut area. Then the Ukrainian artillery hit three tanks, and the Russian ones caught fire and broke into pieces. The fiercest fighting on the front also continued in the direction of Kupian, where the enemy moved troops from the direction of Abdiv. In response, the National Army took appropriate steps. The Ukrainian Defense Forces repulsed the invaders' attack and succeeded in holding back the advance of the Russian invaders. Ukraine's Defense Ministry shared footage showing Ukrainian drone operators having attacked Russian T-90 tanks hiding in trees in the Bakhmut region. The footage shows the Ukrainian drone hitting the area next to the tank and blowing it to bits in just one precise hit. The Ukrainian armed forces also shared footage of a Ukrainian kamikaze drone crashing into two Russian T-80 tanks on the battlefield. The video shows when two Russian tanks that were operating and carrying several troops were suddenly hit by two Ukrainian kamikaze drones, forcing Putin's troops to flee in fear. The Ukrainian Ministry of Defense released aerial reconnaissance footage from the K-2 battalion detecting concentrations of Russian equipment, enemy personnel, and tanks in the Bakhmut area. The ONBR-54 caliber artillery then opened fire and damaged and destroyed a number of targets. In the footage, it can be seen that two tanks, three armored vehicles, and a Russian ammunition depot were destroyed. Again in this direction, the Ukrainian armed forces managed to weaken the Russian defenses and force Putin's troops to retreat. Meanwhile, according to Russian media, on the territory of the city of Kupiansk, Active hostilities continue between Russian troops and the armed forces of Ukraine. Soldiers of the Western grouping of the Russian armed forces stepped up their positional assault and disabled the formations of the Ukrainian armed forces from a number of fortifications. To date, Russian units have managed to occupy strategically important positions near settlements, located south of Olshiny and Pervomaisky. It is reported that the control line now runs along the forest belt adjacent to the indicated area. However, Russia's military actions are not limited to the region. Scouts of the 1st Tank Army of the Russian Armed Forces southeast of Kupians discovered an armored personnel carrier of the Ukrainian Armed Forces in the village of Kislavka and managed to fire on it from an anti-tank complex. The Russian Armed Forces also launched a counterattack near the village of Rabatino. Today it became known that the Armed Forces of the Russian Federation launched a counteroffensive near the village of Rabatino the purpose of which was to push Ukrainian troops to positions farther from settlements. Yesterday, infantry units of the armed forces of Ukraine, with minimal support from armored vehicles, repeatedly tried to attack Russian positions in the rabatino verbovo line area. Ukrainian troops used artillery, including cluster munitions, to support their actions. However, Russian artillery worked in coordination with howitzers, MLRS mortars, and anti-tank systems, which made it possible to successfully repel the attack. As a result of the fierce fighting, both sides lost several armored vehicles. 
However, after the successful defense, the Russian forces launched counteroffensives in a number of areas, repositioning themselves in new positions and pushing the Ukrainian armed forces from their original positions. The whole process was actively covered by the work of Russian artillery, which also attacked Ukrainian positions. Meanwhile, the outcome of the fighting in the following days and weeks depended heavily on the degree of attrition both sides suffered, about which little information can be verified. At the time of publication, it was too early to make any conclusions about the success of the renewed Ukrainian counteroffensive. In the medium term, regardless of whether or not substantial progress is made in these new armor advances, Ukraine's capacity to continue to attack the ground and discharge ammunition at this rate has a limit, reaching which will mark the climax of the offensive. It remains unclear what advantage Ukraine could gain before this moment arrives, but Kyiv's goals have likely been readjusted since the counterattack began in June. The most likely scenario is a continued fight of attrition, the likely result being a numbers game between Russia's industrial power and the ability of the West to match it with continued deliveries of ammunition and other equipment.